Hey you guys, so today is a bit of an abnormality and I sort of came in a bit frantic to think, oh, I've got to sort this out. But then I thought, well, no, I may as well film this because you can all learn a lot. Basically, my grooms have called me and said that G is got a really swollen leg and he's got some rashes on his face and he's just a little bit lethargic and they're really quite worried. So come on in, I'm really sick as well, so excuse me. So I've grabbed my two-year-old, chucked her in the car and we've come up to see him. And I'm gonna show it to you now. Please excuse my voice because I'm really sick as well today. So everyone's sick. But I wanna show you how to, that these things happen, it's normal. <coughs> and then how to deal with it in a way that just creates less stress from your perspective and that it doesn't escalate into a massive issue. You know, horses with colic and dying from that or <coughs> riding around on um, uh, injuries versus just swellings, okay? So let me come in and show you. So first thing I did, oh, perfect timing. Someone's having a roll. <coughs> oh, GG. Clearly feeling better already. Oh, good boy, beautiful. <laughs> you couldn't have timed that better. So if you have a look at him, it's a bit hard because we've got some treatment on already. But, and I've actually taken, I'll take, took some video of it before we did it. But he actually has a big rash just here and his hind leg is really, really swollen and I'll cut over there so you can see it as well. And at first glance, you might think, oh my gosh, he's hit himself. But there's a few things you do to make sure everything's okay, okay? So the first thing you do always, if you see something wrong with your horse, is check their temperature. If you check their temperature, you know if they're internally really sick or not. So if they start to get an infection, if um, they're a bit colicky, the very first thing that's gonna happen, well, the, if, if they've got a fever, you're in big trouble. So you wanna call the vet immediately. So the first thing you do always is check their temperature. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second, okay? The next thing we wanna do is look at the situation. So we can see that there was rawness here, which again, I'll click back over to you, but there was no swelling or heat there. It was just raw. And then this leg, we wanna see how hot it is, okay? And we've been treating it now for a few hours, so it's actually gone down a lot, it's much better. But it's still a little bit hot and it was boiling hot when we touched it to begin with, okay? So we know that there's heat, that's what we do know. We now know he doesn't have a temperature, so we're fairly safe, we don't have to ring the vet immediately. Now we can start to work through what's wrong, okay? The next thing we do is we trot him up, and you'll see us, we trot him up on a hard surface, and we'll show you the video of us doing that, because what that does is make sure that he's not lame, okay? And generally, if they knock themselves and their swelling's due to a knock, they will most likely become across lame as well. You know, if you knock your own leg, you, you limp a little bit, if it's swelling due to something else, you may not get the lameness. You may get a little bit of stiffness just because there's swelling there, but not hopping lame, okay? We've done that as well, so we now we know he's not lame, okay? So once I've done all of those quick checks to make sure everything's okay immediately, then I start to go, what do I do, okay? And, once I'm, and now that I've had a look at all that, I've taken photos, I've got a really good vet that I have on a first name basis. So if you don't have a vet that you deal with constantly, it's really good to have one so that you can bounce ideas off them. I've sent him photos and videos, etc., of what's going on. He agrees that the horse isn't lame. He's, because he doesn't have a temperature, he doesn't think it's worthwhile him coming out. But he gave me some ideas to problem shoot to figure out what the problem might be. And what it's turned out is he's got stinging nettles in his field. And he's actually ended up, if you come right under here, Ames, and show them his little bump here, he's actually got all these little wear marks. There we go. From the stinging nettles. <laughs> so we've got rid of the stinging nettles in his field, but at least we know what it is, okay? So now we've got to do is treat the symptoms, which I'm going to go through all of that with you and keep a close eye on him. And hopefully he'll now be okay by Monday or Tuesday and ready to get back into work. But this is the sort of stuff you need to know so that you know how to solve it and know how to prevent bigger issues and also bigger vet bills in the future. Okay, perfect, so let's get into it. 
Okay guys, so when we check the temperature, we put it up the bottom and we tend to use a digital thermometer and we cover it in Vaseline just so, well as you can imagine, if you have something up your bottom, it's a nice feeling if it's got some Vaseline on, it's a bit more comfortable. What degrees are we looking for? Um, a horse's temperature can range quite a lot. Around 37.5 is the general um, temperature, but we actually check our horses' temperatures quite frequently, so we know what they sit at at a regular basis. You can pop that in if you want, Ames. So we know that he always sits around 37.5 to 36, so anything that's around that we'll be quite comfortable with, okay? You can see here Amy stays beside him so she doesn't get kicked, and it's quite uncomfortable for them, so they do move around quite a lot, so you just need to sort of stay with them so that you get that right. And remember, checking the temperature is the absolute key to success here. If the temperature is okay, generally they're going to be okay from a colicky clinical perspective. When it's finished, it just beeps at you. So we're at 35.8 at the moment, 35.9, still counting. Still counting. And as you can see, it's not the easiest job to do because it just takes time. We're almost there. Still counting. It's time to slow the count down now, as you can see here. So that means it's about to beep. Good boy, GG. And you can see how it slowed down. So the likelihood of it being too high is very, very low. It's probably gonna be around 37, I'd say, which is fine for him. There we go. So he's 36.9, so that's completely acceptable. So now what we do is we just check that more frequently to make sure he's okay. Okay, so once we've checked his temperature and we know he's okay via that, then we just want to make sure he's not lame, okay? So a hard surface is where we want to go and we just want to run him out. So we just want to run him out to make sure he's not lame. Okay, if you can give him a little run there, Ames. Yeah, and he's actually not lame, so that's really good. So even with the swelling, you expect him to be, okay, a little bit stiff. That, and that's acceptable. Come on, Gigi. But he's not hopping lame. So that's really, really good sign. So we know actually that he should be okay. It shouldn't be a bony issue. Um, it's just a little bit of thickening and a little bit of swelling. Okay, so because we've come to the conclusion or the deduction rather that we think it is a in reaction. I always have some different bits and pieces here with me that I approve by the vet before I use it. So this is a special cream that he's made up for me just for these sorts of issues. Has a little bit of cortisone in it. So because of that, we make sure that we wear a glove and we just cover the area that he's struggling with or that's a bit inflamed and a bit raw with this. And it'll take the itch out of it so that he doesn't start to itch his face even more and more and more as well. Okay, so treatment plan thus far is this cream on three times a day. We're gonna give him some antihistamine in his actual food. And every hour, we're gonna, or every two hours, we're gonna hose his legs for 20 minutes. And every hour, walk him for 10 to 15. And I'd hope that by Monday, he should be fully recovered. Okay guys, so then we've just got to put his anti-inflammatories anti which he's been given and a little bit of antihistamine, but sometimes they don't like to eat it. So what we actually do is just get some apple juice, pour that apple juice, <coughs> excuse me, pour that apple juice in there and that will make it just a little bit yummier for them as well so you make sure he eats up all of his meds. So what we're going to do is we're going to really cold hose that leg, okay? And we're gonna cold hose that leg to get the inflammation down a little bit. We're gonna check his temperature again while he's in here. And by getting the inflammation down with the cold hosing, 
that helps everything recover, okay? And again, you can see here the difference in them. So again, if you've got an issue ever with swelling, always think cold will get rid of it, yeah? You can use ice boots, but just a nice cold running tap for a good 15, 20 minutes and then see how they look is one of the best treatments that you can do. So when we start cold hosing our le the leg, we just move the rug a little bit so it doesn't get wet. We tie his tail up and we literally just run cold water on the leg. Whoop. That's it. And you can see he finds it quite, diff quite hard, quite difficult, not enjoyable, but you just let that run it's icy cold on the leg and we do this genuinely for a good 20 minutes or so. We just let it hang like that. And because a lot of the swelling's in the hock, it's almost impossible as you can imagine to ice that well. You can get ice, hock, uh, ice boots that are four hocks, but they just don't work that great. Okay, so we'll just let that drift on there, let that settle. And that's the source of the actual Swelling, it's in the hock. That's why we haven't stable bandaged him anymore because any swelling in the fetlock or down the cannon bone is purely just because of the swelling in the hock. All right, so now that we know that he is actually okay, so he's not lame, he doesn't have a temperature, he just has heat, swelling, and a little bit of a rash, Amy, wonderful Amy, is gonna walk him around in the indoor, so he's on a nice surface, it's not deep, he's nice and safe and comfortable, okay? And the more walking we can get, the more he can move those legs, the more the swelling will go down, okay? So we would do this probably about every hour for a good 10 or 15 minutes. So we try to keep him moving as much as possible and we'll keep him inside the stable to try to keep him away from any allergens. Okay guys, so I hope that really helped you. Basically, what I was trying to show you today is that, hey, stuff happens, but you don't need to stress, you need to think logically, okay? So you do your troubleshooting. First of all, is he lame? Does he have a temperature? In fact, the temperature's first. The temperature is the biggest indicator. Keep checking that temperature, checking that temperature, checking that temperature know what to look for, know what discussions to have with your vet. Saves you money, saves you time and stops escalating. Then, once everything's right, then know how to treat it. So again, a vet might say, cold hose it, exactly what does that look like? And you see that in the video here. Check his temperature, you now know how to do it, okay? When horses do things, prevention is the best cure. And being careful is the most important thing. Check the temperature, check the temperature, check the temperature. If he gets an infection, the temperature will tell you that immediately before potentially there's a symptom that's visible to you. So you can avoid colics, you can avoid big, big, big problems that these things can escalate into, which are actually just small little issues. I hope that helped guys. Please let me know if there's anything else you need to know about this sort of thing. But I just wanted to share this with you to show it's not a nice moment, it's a bit crappy. <laughs> But if you just take a deep breath and take, put things in place, things come out really well. Okay, bye.